Our project is on the Moko Kaue, and it's by me, Megan, Mark, and Max. So what is the Maori Moko Kaue? Um, so it's a distinct traditional chin tattoo that Maori women wear. Um, a lot of the other Maori men and women have the tamoko, which is just the general face tattoo um, with the certain symbols and everything, but women distinctly have the uh, moku kaue. Um, and each design has a distinct meaning and significance used for both aesthetic purposes and to tell one's own story, whether that's social standing, family history, or any other um, story that they want to tell through it. Um, here is a picture of a woman having the moku kaue. You can tell the symbols going down her chin with the ink also around her lips and everything. Um, so the moku kaue is a right for all women. They believe in the Maori culture that all women have the right to wear it. Um, it expresses the commitment and respect to the Maori culture and that's the tomoko in general as well. Um, it said that Maori women always wear the moko inside them close to their heart so they always have the symbolic meaning for it inside of them and it's not till they have the tattoo that it is expressed for everyone else to see. Um, so the origin of the uh, moko kawe. Um, first, so they got the method from the eastern side of Polynesia and brought it to New Zealand. Um, and there's also like other islands and countries in Western and Eastern Pacific um, that use the same methods for tattooing. They may not use the um, tamoko or moku kawe, but um, just tattooing in general, they use similar um, tactics and tools and everything. Um, so these are some of the t tools that they would use earlier on. These are older ones, um, but they use certain combs called uhi, um, dipped in ink and put into the skin with small mallets called ta, which is where the name tamoko, which is the general tattoo, comes from in the face. Um, so over here is just a picture with some of the mallets. Um, I think they're tucked in, but they would kind of pierce the skin just like you would think of like with a normal tattoo. Um, and one thing that's different than normal tattoos with it, it, it kind of raises the skin a little, so it's not just smooth like a normal tattoo you would think of. Um, it has texture to it, so you would be able to feel it um, on the skin. Um, also, other ways it originated. Um, a lot of Maori traditions and rituals, including the tomoko, um, come from like mythological stories and times and all of that. So, it, um, the Tattoos in general, the tomoko, were extracted from mythological atua or gods. Um, so the name moko came from rua moko, which is the god of earthquakes and volcanoes and seasons. So right here is an image or a drawing um, of, depicted of what rua moko would look like with um, showing all the earthquakes and volcanoes in the background. Okay, so I'm going over the history, and so I'm going to start off in the 18th century. Uh, Cook's Forrester describes a woman having punctured and blue lips, and then Mahorn described having or described seeing the woman having two small square spots on their lower lip and two round spots on the side of their mouths. It was rare, rare during this time um, to find any of the females having tattoos on their forehead, neck, or buttocks, or underneath their breast or thighs. And in this picture, this is the first um, visual picture or image that anybody ever saw of female tattoos. And this one woman was found in New Zealand. In the 19th century, Rutherford's account of female moko explained a figure, um, or explained females having a figure tattoo on their chin and also more inside of their mouth. Um, and then they also had two candlestick tattoos on the side of their mouths. Um, it was more common during this time period for females to have tattoos similar to males, um, more on their lower part of their body, so like their thighs and their buttocks and everywhere. Um, and then also as soon as um, girls hit puberty, they more commonly got tattoos around their lips. This would emphasize their red lips and um, to grab attentions of males. And then in the 20th century, um, Chisel Moko practice was practiced with serrated um, blades. It was there's very few records of any tattoos um, that have been 
got it, that have been received most recently just because of the combination of um, artists that they would get their tattoos done from and then the unnamed tattoos. Um, and then the most modern tattoos are normally copied now. So like in this picture, the one on the right is more um, is a recent lady who got a tattoo similar to the ancestor on the left. And so you can see the resemblance on their chin. And then I have a video of a female who most recently, 2016, this video was at least published, and she receives a Maori tattoo in New Zealand and it, she's explaining um, her feelings on it. Why our government done is to revitalize um, our tonga, uh, especially, especially within our whanau, and to reclaim um, our tonga, which has been lost for I saw the time generations. Um, and that was the two reasons that motivated me to get it done. We have the way to like this here. So I'll be talking about receiving mokokoi. So the Maori believe the head to be the most sacred part of one's body, which is why receiving, having a facial moku is a definitive statement of who you are as a Maori. So receiving tomoku is a sacred experience. Uh, for those involved in the process, eating with their hands or talking to anyone not receiving the moku is forbidden. Crying out in pain was considered a weakness and withstanding the pain is important in terms of pride for Maori. Uh, other regulations that govern the experience include abstaining from sex and avoiding consuming solid foods. Family members are usually in attendance to witness a special moment with music, singing, and chanting being performed to help soothe the pain. So this is Pip Hartley, and she is uh, performing a uh, tomoku using uhi, uh, or chisels, which is a traditional tool for, for engraving uh, tomoku. Uh, she also states that she prefers to draw straight onto the person because it, it's an exchange of energy, working with the contours of their body and translating their story and genealogy and for a lot of people, it's a transformative experience. So this is life coach Sally Anderson with her husband, Roger Tatai, and she received her moku kawai from moku specialist, Inia Taylor. So Sally Anderson says her moku represents her work as a healer and what she has been through, which included a gang rape by the Mongol mob in the 1980s. So uh, Inia Taylor actually turned Sally down twice before he met with Roger Tetai and um, the rest of their family in which they pleaded their case for, for Sally Anderson. Uh, they, they traveled from Panguru and stated that there was presidents of Iwi and Hapu, or tribes, gifting the Moku Kauai to, to Pakeha, white descent New Zealanders, and believed who, who believed they were worthy and that their elders had given them their blessings. Inia Taylor actually steered clear of using traditional patterns and used a tattoo gun instead of the traditional tools that he would normally use and feels that many artists would have done the same in that exact circumstance. So these are um, Moku specialists with differing views. Uh, Mark Kapua says he would not deny Pakeha women uh, the Moku Kauai given the right circumstances, stating there have been uh, Pakeha who have lived predominantly Maori lives who were gifted the Moku Kauai because of their contributions to, to the Maori community. Uh, Nahina Hoha'ia believes fellow Moku specialists should not gift 
the should not give the moku kawai to non Maori, stating not to defile our toonga cultural property by giving our bar, our birthright to Pakeha. Uh, Tania Carter on the left, uh, who has had her moku for ten years, believe Maori Tonga should be shared. She says we want our reo language to be compulsory in schools. So why would we deny them the Tonga of Tomoku? And musician Ariana Tekao has supported the same view as Nahina, stating that people can show their support without appropriating this Tonga as their own. Talking about the significance of the uh, Moku Kawe to marry women. Um, so Moku Kawe uh, is a visual rep representation of the Mari Wahine woman to their Waha Kapapa or genealogy. Um, it is seen as a birthright to all Mari women to lay claim to their families, their clan, and their people. Moku Kawe is not earned. Every Mari woman has the right to adorn this tattoo. Uh, however, this only applies to people of Mari descent. So, as Mark previously talked about, um, People like foreigners or of different descent will try and claim um, this tattoo, and that's just not it's not seen as respectful, and it's just like a total disregard of their culture, um, because the Maori women hold the moku moku kawe like it's a very deep and a uh, respectful and prestigious tattoo to wear. Um, so here's some examples of it. Um, obviously, it's a very noticeable tattoo. It's on the facial structure, um, and it really resembles strength, power, and prosperity. Um, so the importance of understanding the Moku Kawe. Uh, previously, the Moku Kawe was believed to be associated with gangs and was and had negative connotations surrounding these tattoos. Um, there was recent or past gang violence throughout New Zealand, um, these facial tattoos were misunderstood as being like a gang sign or gang tags. Uh, so that brought a lot of negative view uh, uh, as far as like social acceptance to it. So that's why uh, the, there's a decline in the amount of women, married women, that were actually wearing these tattoos. Um, but however, recently there's been an upsurgence of younger married generations wearing the Moku Kawe as a form of self-identity and dignity. Um, so yeah, there's new, people are starting to wear them again, and it's being commonly known as like a cultural, and, and people are accepting it for its cultural um, ability. Um, by understanding what the Moku Kawe actually represents, it has opened up the opportunity for women and Maori to wear their customs proudly. Um, so along with this upsurgence, uh, there are some women some married women who are at the front of this uh, charge, and Nanaya Mahuta is one of them. Uh, she's leading this resurgence of the lost tradition, and in 2016, Nanaya Mahuta was the first female politician to wear the Moku Kawe. Um, she has encouraged other women to take up their custom and wear their tattoo proudly. Uh, and this is her. Oh, I'll get to the next one. Yeah, so this is her. She obviously, she's. She got this in 2016. Um, she's part of the government system in New Zealand, and it's a very strong symbol um, showing that it is an ex acceptable tattoo for society. Right. It means um, it's a recognition of uh, my identity, the things that are important to me, where I come from, where I belong, that I'm from uh, here, Aotearoa, New Zealand, in particular Waikato. Mania Poto in Ngāpuhi, and it's a testament really to the attributes uh, that I carry um, from my ancestors, but also those that I give on to, pass on to my own children. There I think of younger women along the East Coast where it's not unusual to see uh, women with moko. In fact, it's more unusual to see women without moko along the East Coast. And so, you know, there you have it. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. I have to say I'm really encouraged in Parliament. I've received nothing but warm remarks and, uh, you know, if that's a, I guess, a testament of um, the views at large, New Zealand's changing. But in terms of attitudes towards people wearing moko,
previously was associated to gangs. Um, and, you know, that is not uh, the case. I, I could put it like this. I um, have a strong uh, desire to want to um, assert positively what it means to be Māori, waikato, maniapoto, ngāpuhi, a Māori woman, um, and all the positive things that come with that. Where, you know, it's an absolute honour to wear um, the ancestral markings of our, our tupuna.